Well, hey, family, and welcome to Coffee and Kathy. This is Steph from the Grief to Great Day podcast. You're listening to our weekly devotional episode. Now, Kathy, she was the sister of one of my best childhood friends. Each year in the summer, she would tag along when we went swimming or skateboarding, and in the winter, it was sledding. Now, some days that was okay, but some days we didn't want the little sister to hang around. Now, as we all grew up and I moved to North Carolina, I saw very little of her. Then in 2021, over four decades after those summer and winter activities, I heard that not only had she become a children's pastor and lived in Guatemala teaching missionary children English, but she had also gotten cancer. She returned to the States. Her sister began caring for her, but within a couple of months, at the age of 50, she died. Now, what I learned after that made me really sad that I didn't know her better as an adult. See, God wasn't a part of her life. He was her life, and her impact on others was great. These weekly devotionals are a way for you to get quiet, grab some coffee, tea, or a green smoothie, and just listen as I read from Kathy's blog entitled Learned Along the Way. She was incredibly wise, funny, and a fully committed Christ follower. Grief, you know, the thing you're going through right now, it is the hardest thing you'll ever face. So don't let anyone ever diminish that. But let's also not diminish the power of God's word and the transformational healing he will do in your life. I'm a living testimony of going from pitiful, what I defined as brokenhearted years of tears, angry at God in the world, overwhelmed and confused, to powerful, what I defined as peaceful, joyful, and strong in my trust, hope, and faith in God. You're not alone, and your day does not have to be your forever. Oh, I'm so glad you're here today. So all you need to do now is be still and just listen. The ABCs of insomnia. I have an overactive brain. I always have. When I was a child, I would lay in bed at night and and make a plan for how to get the entire family, including the pets, out of the house in case of a fire. Had we ever had a house fire? Nope. But my fevered little brain just knew it was going to happen and that it would be on me to save everyone. Never mind that I had two perfectly awesome parents and a fabulous older sister right there with me. It was all on me to save us all. Overactive brain. As an adult, I still have that same overactive brain, and it still loves to do its most creative, grueling, and unreasonable workouts between 1 and 2 a.m. I don't imagine disasters like house fires now. Instead, the brain kicks in with a to-do list and a problems list, and a how are we going to deal with that list. During the day, I do a much better job catching the lists when they start to march through my mind. I wrestle them to the ground by using these steps. Write down what needs to be done. Pray over it, releasing it to God. Move on by simply doing the next thing and repeat as needed. But in the world of half awake, that process is much harder to do. I keep a pad of paper and a pen by my bed so that I can write it all down if, no, when it wakes me up. And I used to have to do that a lot. And then I would toss and turn, look at the clock every few minutes, calculate how many hours of sleep I would get if I fell asleep that instant, insomnia at its finest, and face all those problems the next day in a groggy state. But then I discovered a different strategy, one that works much, much better, at least for me. I use my ABCs of God to direct my thoughts. And generally, I drift off to sleep somewhere around the letter G. Once or twice I have gotten to Z, and then I had to start again. But that is exceptionally rare. Here's what I do. I start with the letter A. I like to say that I use the names and characteristics of God, but it's more accurate to say that I use anything that starts with the letter that I am on, as long as it's about His character and heart. Here's what it might sound like sometimes in my head and sometimes aloud. A, God, you are awesome, almighty, my all in all, the alpha and omega, 
all that I need, all around me, abundant in your mercies, absolute, awe-inspiring. And I keep going until I'm out of A's. Sometimes that is in a word or two. Sometimes it's a long list. It really doesn't matter. When I can't think of another A, I move on to B. B. God, you are bold, beautiful, the best, the bomb. Sorry, my 80s are showing. Breathtaking in your goodness, greatness, and mercy. Beyond my comprehension. Before all things and the glue that holds all things together. And by the way, that last line in the bees was from Colossians 1. I will definitely use verses and snippets of songs to fill my list. I should add that I don't stress about the I's, the Q's, and the Z's if I get to them. I don't stress about anything on the list. I just keep naming things until I run out or I am asleep. Another version of this is to name all that you are thankful for alphabetically. I have not tried it, but I bet it would work just as well. However, I like focusing on who God is because it puts everything else in perspective. It is a practical working out of taking every thought captive to Christ, 2 Corinthians 10.5, and setting my heart on things above, Colossians 3.1. And 99% of the time, I drift off to sleep without getting out the paper and pen, without looking at the clock, and without fretting about the to-dos praying for you as you take every thought captive that you will sleep well tonight.